Challenge, Linux, Nano, Vim, and Bash. It's important to know Linux for the IT field. In this lab, we'll create a basic Bash script, we'll change its permissions, and we'll run the script. Let's get into the demonstration now. I am working in a virtual machine, and this time I'm working in Debian Linux. This is Debian Linux with the GNOME desktop. And I already have the terminal open and I'm logged in as user. So my prompt shows user at deb52, name of the computer's deb52. So we're being prompted to type something. So let's get into it. Let's type some stuff here. First, if we type ls and press enter, we'll see the standard directories that we get for any user account, including desktop, documents, downloads, and so on. I have another one here that I added called code. And what I want to do here is I want to make a script. I want to create a bash script. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a directory where I'm going to place my scripts. To do that, I'll use the command mkdir and name the directory scripts. We'll press enter for that. And that should create that directory. Now remember in the Linux command line, if nothing has gone wrong, it won't tell you anything. So if everything went well, you won't see any error messages. No news is good news. Let's take a look with an ls command again. And we'll see that the directory scripts is now there. Fantastic. Now let's change over to that directory. We'll do a cd scripts, press enter. And now you can tell from our prompt that we are in the scripts directory. At this point, I want to create a script. So we have a couple options. We have a lot of editor options in Linux. You can use nano, you can use vim, you can use gedit, which is actually a graphical editor, kind of like notepad in windows. But we'll start with nano. That's probably the easiest one, and it's built into just about every Linux distribution out there. So I'm typing nano, and then I'm going to type the name of the file that I want to create, which is going to be loop.sh. So nano will open the nano program, and then it'll also create a file called loop.sh. The .sh extension tells us that this is a Linux shell script. And by default, we're going to be working with bash scripts. But if you ever see .sh, you know this is a Linux shell script that we're working with here. So it's going to be nano and loop.sh. We'll press enter. And that'll bring us into the nano program. And from here, you can just type whatever stuff you want to type for your script. And when you're done, you can save it, you can exit, and you can see all these other options down here like cut and paste. If you see the caret here, the little arrow pointing up, the caret means control. So if we press control K on the keyboard, that will cut information. If we do control U, that'll paste information. If we do control X, that'll exit out and ask if we want to save the file. Okay, we've already given a name to the file. It's loop.sh. So let's start writing our file. Now, whenever you work with a Linux script, you want to tell it what shell you want it to run in. And by default, this will usually be bash, the bash shell. It doesn't have to be, but that's very common. And that's what we're going to use here. So the first thing we have to do is explain to Linux what shell we are using and the path to that shell. We do that by typing the number sign, exclamation point, and then the path to the shell, which for bash is slash bin slash bash. This is known as the bang line or the shebang. And that tells Linux that this is indeed a bash script that we're about to write. So I'll press enter twice here and we'll add 
some information to make a basic script file. It's gonna be very simple. I'm gonna use the echo command. And the echo command is used to display text on your screen. Another one you could use is printf. I'm gonna use echo. And here's the text I want. This is a loop test, period. That's it. So all the script is gonna do when we run it, all it's gonna do is put the words, this is a loop test on the screen. That's all. That is our script. So I wanna exit out, so I'm gonna press Control X on the keyboard. And it says, do you wanna save the modified buffer? Well, that just means, do you wanna save the file? Yes, we do. I'll press Y for yes. And then it asks the file name to write. If we hadn't selected a file name before, we'd have to specify a file name, but we already did, and that's the file name I want. So I'll just press enter, and that saves it. That's it. If you wanted to check, you could always go back in and work with the file more with the nano command, or we could use the cat command, which just displays the contents of the file, whatever that file is. So we'll do a cat on loop.sh, press enter, and it shows the contents, everything we just typed here. That's it. Okay, so I wanna run this script. Normally you do that by typing dot slash and the name of the script, which would be loop.sh. Now, if I press enter, it's gonna say, sorry, can't run that, permission denied. Permission denied. So we don't have enough permissions here. Well, if you run an ls-l command, you'll get some additional information here. You will see the permissions. What we need to do is be able to execute this file. Right now, we cannot. We can read it, we can write to it, but we cannot execute it. So we have to change the permissions. To do that, I'm gonna use the chmod command, change mode. Now there's a lot of ways to do this. You can get into the numbers of it, like 755 or 644, and that would change the various permissions here. But we're just gonna keep it simple here, and we're gonna make it executable. We do that by saying plus X, and we have to specify the file we wanna change, which is loop.sh. So I'm gonna do that now, press enter, and now we'll run the ls-l command again. When I do so, you'll see there's a bunch of X's here. Now we can execute the file. So up arrow to that command dot slash loop dot sh, press enter, and it executes the script. This is a loop test, done. So all it's doing is it's echoing that text onto the screen. It's printing that information to the screen. Let's do a little bit more with the script. And this time, instead of using nano, let's use vim. So instead of our nano command, which is great, it's fine if you wanna use that, I prefer vim when I'm working on configuration files and scripts, that's just me. But let's try it. Let's do a vim on loop.sh. That'll open up the same file, just in a different editor. And this works a little bit differently. You have different modes in vim. So I'll press I right now. And you'll see on the bottom left-hand side, it says insert. So now we can actually type into this script. I'm going to arrow down here and go down one more line. And I want to add a for loop. So the construct is four, and I'm gonna say four i. i is gonna be our variable, which will stand for a group of numbers in rapid succession. We're gonna say four i in one, two, three, four, five. Press enter, and we'll type do. For each of these numbers, it's gonna do the following. What is it gonna do? it's going to echo some information. We're gonna do echo 
double quotes, looping, dollar sign, I, and double quotes. So it's going to echo, it's going to print information to the screen, and that's going to say looping, and then this, which is a variable. Whenever you see a dollar sign, you know that a variable is following it. I is the variable. Here is I. <laughs> Here is I. Bad grammar and all. And I will be worth one, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, every time it loops through this for statement. Okay, at the end, we'll type done. And that's it. That will be our for loop within a bash script. Very basic. Okay, when you're, and by the way, Vim is really cool. It's a great program to work with. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, you can do a lot with Vim. When you're done typing, you want to get out of insert mode. And what we do is we just press the escape key. And then you see it says nothing down here. Now we know we're in command mode again. And from here, you can do a lot of things. You can make changes. You could say add line numbers and type colon set number. And you'll get line numbers for your script. You could change the color if you wanted to. You could do a colon color and say change it to desert. That changes the syntax highlighting, the color a little bit. And that will last until you close the file. You could make it permanent by adding stuff to your vimrc file. But that gets a little bit beyond what we're doing here. So again, we want to escape out and then we want to save this file. In vim, to do that, we do a colon and w that will save. And I'm also going to do Q, which will quit. So save and quit. Colon WQ. Press enter. And it's done. If we now do a cat on that file, we'll see all the stuff that we typed. Everything that we added to Vim. And I have a basic introductory video for Vim. If you want to check it out, that's at my website, prouse.tech slash vim. So that's at prouse.tech slash vim. And you'll see there's a video here, introduction to vim that I did. So check that out if you want. And go back here. All right. At this point, I want to run the script again because I made modifications to it. So once again, we're going to do a dot slash loop dot sh. Press enter. And here we go. It says, this is a loop test. That's the original text that we echoed in there. And then it loops one through five. Looping one through five and then finishes. So you can imagine this is uh, some pretty cool stuff. Uh, you could do a ton with bash scripting. This is just one example. And I have another example of a bash script for Linux at GitHub, and if you go to github.com slash Dave Prouse slash LNSF, you'll see it's the Super Ping script, which has a lot of stuff here. You can check it out. And another example of a bash script, and here it is. It'll ping uh, as many computers as you want, given a list of computers in a file. So something you might be interested in, it's pretty cool. And it actually does, once again, make use of uh, if-then statements and uh, a while loop instead of a for loop. So check that out if you get a chance. But that's about it for this lab. And at this point, I challenge you to go ahead and create a basic bash script, change its permissions, and then run that script and see if it works. Good luck.